so welcome back so already we have discussed different parts of an ic engine classification of ic engine etc so in this session we will discuss in detail the working of a four stroke engine how the four stroke engine executes its so cycle. based on the number of strokes we can classify an ic engine into two categories that is four stroke engine and two stroke engine and even the six stroke six stroke engine is also available in some research level but we have the commercial level we have only these two types of engine available so based on number of strokes we have four stroke engine and two stroke engine so in this session we will discuss only four stroke engine the working of four stroke engine and why it is called a four stroke engine that is a question so already we know that when the piston moves from one dead center to other it is known as a stroke so four stroke engine completes its one working cycle in four strokes of the piston so four stroke engine completes its one working cycle in four movement of the piston from one dead center to other so that is why it is known as a four stroke engine and in terms of crank revolution you know that if the crank rotates 180 degree it is equivalent to one stroke so that means four strokes are equivalent to 720 degree or two revolution of the crank so this four stroke engine will complete its cycle in two revolution of the crank so these are the four strokes you can see the piston first it's moving from downward one stroke again upward second stroke again downward third one and again fourth final stroke so four strokes are required to complete one cycle and at the same time we can see the crank each stroke the crank is rotating in half revolution so that means to complete the entire cycle for a four stroke engine the crank has to rotate two complete revolutions so that is the crank revolution in terms of stroke now we are giving name specific name to this each of the stroke one is suction stroke the first was stroke is known as the suction or intake stroke first stroke second stroke is known as the compression stroke and third stroke is power stroke or is also known as expansion stroke and finally we have exhaust stroke so these are the four strokes of a four stroke engine now we have to check what is happening in this each of the stroke then we can clearly understand the working of this engine so first we will see what is suction stroke or intake stroke is what are the things happening in this so first one is suction or intake stroke this is the figure of that so what are the things happening at the beginning of suction stroke the inlet valve opens so you can see here the first valve is inlet valve this is exhaust valve this is our piston connecting rod crank etc so at the beginning of this stroke we will have, we have to open the inlet valve or the inlet valve gets open so that is the first thing happening in suction stroke the inlet valve opens then the piston moves from tdc to bdc that is moving downward you can see this arrow the piston initially is at tdc at this position coming downward so it will finally at the end of the stroke it will be at bdc bottom dead center so piston moves downward or from tdc to bdc so what will happen here suppose there is only nothing is there inside initially some air only is there what will happen when the piston is moving from in the downward direction it will create a vacuum pressure inside the cylinder so just imagine suppose you are the same thing happens if you are pulling out the plunger of a syringe so you are placing syringe in a bucket of water and what will happen if you are pulling the syringe backwards plunger of a syringe backwards it will drag the air inside 
towards this direction so that will create a vacuum pressure it will create a vacuum pressure inside the syringe so similar to that here also when the piston moves from downward the air molecules will be dragged in the downward direction so that will create a vacuum pressure vacuum pressure means the pressure is less than atmospheric pressure in this area in this inside the cylinder what will happen what is the pressure at the inlet manifold this is the inlet manifold this is the exhaust manifold already we have studied that so in the inlet manifold already we have the air fuel mixture if it is a petrol engine air and fuel petrol are mixed with the help of carburetor and it will be here available in the inlet manifold if it is a diesel engine only air will be here anyway the pressure in this region in the inlet manifold will be very near to atmospheric pressure but here we have a less pressure vacuum pressure is created so what will happen any fluid will move from high pressure region to a low pressure region that is we know that fluid will move from high pressure region to low pressure region so this pressure difference the pressure at the inlet manifold is atmospheric pressure so this pressure difference will draw the air fuel mixture or air through the inlet manifold into a cylinder so that is the first stroke so first inlet valve opens piston is moving in the downward direction from tdc to bdc so that will drag the air molecules towards the downward direction so that will help to create a vacuum pressure inside this cylinder but the pressure outside pressure at the inlet manifold is atmospheric pressure so that means here we have atmospheric pressure but here we are less pressure so the fluid will move from high pressure region to low pressure region so that will draw the air fuel mixture into a cylinder so if it is a petrol engine that is why we have two options here if it is a four stroke petrol engine the air fuel mixture will be entering into the cylinder during suction stroke but if it is a diesel engine only air will be entering fuel will be injected later only air will be entering so anyway some charge will be entering into the cylinder and at the end of the stroke we have to close the inlet valve so inlet valve is open at the beginning of this suction stroke so we have to close that otherwise this will again escape through the inlet manifold so at the end of the suction stroke inlet valve is closed so these things are happening in the first stroke that is suction stroke so you have to be study in this particular order first inlet valve opens then piston moves from tdc to bdc a vacuum pressure is created that pressure difference will help to draw the air fuel mixture or air into the cylinder finally we are closing the inlet valve now what happened in the second stroke compression stroke second stroke is compression stroke now in this you can see no valves are open both the inlet and exhaust valve are closed so already we have the air fuel mixture or air entered into the cylinder by during the suction stroke and in this we are moving piston from bdc to tdc so it is moving upward so in the second stroke the piston is moving upward direction from bottom dead center to top dead center so what will happen the piston will compress the air fuel molecules or air inside into the clearance volume because we know that this is a clearance volume at tdc the volume above piston is known as clearance volume it is a very small volume compared to the total volume so to that volume we are compressing this air fuel mixture and air so compression takes place that is why it is known as a compression stroke and what will happen to the pressure and temperature of the gas this air fuel molecules will be very high so pressure and temperature of the charge or air fuel mixture or air will be very high it increases by this rapid compression pressure and temperature it will reach above 1000 degrees celsius and pressure also increases very high and at the end of the stroke a spark is given so we have a spark plug if it is a petrol engine 
this is a figure of a diesel engine so we can see here it is having a fuel injector but if it is a petrol engine instead of fuel injector we have a spark plug at the end of the stroke when it is completing the combustion stroke we will give the spark if it is a petrol engine we will give the spark by a spark plug and if it is a diesel engine like this we will inject fuel through fuel injector we will inject diesel high pressure diesel atomized form to this fuel injector at the end of the stroke so these are the things happening in combustion stroke so piston is moving from upward bdc to tdc the air fuel molecules or air is compressed into clearance volume pressure and temperature increases and finally at the end we are giving spark or injection fuel injection so that will depend upon it is a, if it is a petrol engine or diesel engine if it is a petrol engine we have to use a spark given by spark plug if it is a diesel engine we will inject diesel through fuel injector then third stroke is the most important stroke that is power stroke or expansion stroke so already we have said that in the second stroke pressure and temperature reach to very high value and we are giving an instantaneous spark or a fuel injection so what will happen in the third stroke the burning will take place the combustion we call it as combustion so air is there fuel molecules are also there it is mixed very well it is at high pressure and temperature and we are gaining initiating combustion by spark plug or fuel injector so combustion takes place combustion of air fuel molecules takes place so by due to this drastic combustion of high pressure gas what will happen the expansion of this gas will occur so initially it is clearance volume only this gas are compressed to clearance volume we are burning that so it will try to expand downwards this gas will expand and it will push the piston from tdc to bdc so initially during this stroke the piston is at tdc and we are burning combustion takes place expansion takes place so this gas will push the cylinder downward because see it has to somehow expand the pressure and has to be decreased and volume has to increase so it will pull push this piston downward and it will expand from tdc to bdc the piston will move from tdc to bdc so this stroke we are developing power what is the importance of this stroke compared to all other three stroke what is the importance of power stroke we are getting power only in this stroke alone because in all other strokes we have to move the piston we are in suction stroke we are moving the piston downward it will not automatically move similarly in combustion also we have to move the piston upward in exhaust also we have to move the piston but in power stroke the gas is moving the piston it does not require any output any in the output source for moving the piston because the gas is burned and the expansion of this gas is pushing the piston from tdc to bdc so the power is developed in this stroke only so and it is transmitted to the crankshaft we already know that connecting rod will convert this movement of piston into rotation of crank and we can take that power outside through the crankshaft so that is the third stroke or power stroke power is developed in this stroke and finally we have exhaust stroke so last stroke is exhaust stroke so already we have developed power in the third stroke all the fuel is burned with the help of air then what will happen we have to remove the burned gas so already the gas is burned so we have to remove this otherwise we will not continue this cycle because this cycle is to be completed continuously so we have to remove the burned gas then only the next fresh air fuel mixture or fresh air can enter into the cylinder so that happens in the exhaust stroke so at the beginning of this stroke exhaust valve opens so this is our exhaust valve it comes downward this passage get opens and what will happen to piston it will move now again in upward direction so piston is to be moved from tdc to bdc so again it will move upward tdc to bdc so that will push this burned gas 
out of the cylinder through exhaust manifold. So the movement of the piston will help to remove the burned gas out of the cylinder through exhaust manifold. So already this valve is opened. Now piston is moving from here to upward direction TDC. So it will push the exhaust gas out of the cylinder through exhaust manifold. So it will reject to the atmosphere through silencer or some other devices. It will finally escape into the atmosphere. And we have to close the exhaust valve. That is also important. At the end of the stroke, again we have to close the exhaust valve because again the suction stroke will repeat. So these four strokes are continuously repeating suction, combustion, power, exhaust. Then again we have suction stroke. Again fresh air, fuel mixture, fresh charge will enter. Combustion takes place. Again burning takes place. Power is produced. Again the exhaust will be ejected to the atmosphere. So this is a continuous cycle and the important thing is the power is developed only in power stroke. All other strokes we have to move the piston. Piston will not move by itself. But that we have to do only in a starting. Only at the starting because the power, power developed in power strokes is so high that it will continue rotating due to inertia. So what is inertia? If you switch off a fan it will not stop instantaneously. It requires 2 to 3 minutes to completely become rust. So like that, this piston in the power stroke it is moving very fast. So due to inertia, it will complete the remaining 3 strokes from this power stroke itself. So only at the starting, we have to give some source of energy for rotation of this crank for moving this initial strokes of the piston. For that we have to use some motor or some other manually we have to rotate by hand etc. In our most of the automobile we have a starting motor while switch oning the switch we are we are switch oning that motor so the motor will rotate the crank for initial phase and once the power stroke generated and power is developed we does not require the motor it will automatically cut off and the cycle will be continued and in some other case we have to manually rotate the crank for starting purpose you might have seen in for generator some generator diesel generator etc first we have to rotate the crank manually that is for giving this initial strokes of suction combustion exhaust and once the power stroke is developed, it, we can release that. It is not required. And for better understanding, we have several animations are available in the net. This is taken from Wikipedia and also several videos are also available. So you can very easily understand this. You can see the first stroke, inlet valve opens. This is the inlet valve here. Combustion takes place. Then exo power exhaust suction. This is combustion again power and again again exhaust. So in this, this is the exhaust valve, this is the inlet valve. So you can easily understand the movement of piston and the opening and closing of valve etc. with this animation. Or you can use the video which is link is given in the description box which help to understand better in the concept of four stroke engine. So next session we will discuss the working of two stroke engine. Thank you.